Okay, so so I think maybe we're ready to start. I'm going to start by reading Olivia's poem out loud. This is the um, this is the the homophonic translation. All right, here is Olivia's uh, homophonic poem. None he'll say, despite mulkier wares, be a new bearing among quiet millside. None is say Jupiter a lips petite. Despite said mulkier clue, did O oh, raw despite a monk's key invent, O oh, rapid scribe, here operate water. I love it, it's brilliant. <laughs> it is uh, so fun to read, so fun to hear out loud. The thing I like most about it is it almost makes sense. So you, when, you, when you hear it read or when you read it on a page, you're like, oh yeah, I think this, I think something, some, some event is happening or some story is being told, there's some kind of situation. And yet somehow the poem always manages to, to elide or escape or bypass coherent meaning, but it still gives you a sense of, of real spoken ordinary speech. None he'll say, despite mulkier wares, be a new bearing among quiet millside. You're like, oh, wait, oh, no, never mind. It almost makes sense to you. Um, and so it has a kind of, um, it, ha it, it has, the, it has the, the rhythm and the cadence of ordinary speech. But then when you start adding the words up together, it doesn't actually make any sense. Um, this is wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Olivia. I love that poem. I hope that you'll submit it um, as part of the group. Um, okay, let's read Ellie's. I will never give up. Nothing can stop me. I am like an insect attracted to the, the red, the goal. And when hard times come, I will brush them away and keep on going. I'm not sure if the second the is a typo, but that's my favorite line of the poem. I am like an insect attracted to the red, the goal. Uh, maybe to the red, the goal. That's a very interesting line. Um, I love it. Thank you for sharing. I'm guessing that um, that this poem is a response to the sounds, the kind of translation of the sound situation. Maybe the insects, the incessant frogs or the insects buzzing in the background, something like that. Emma, do you want to read your poem that you posted here? Oh, sure. Um, it's kind of crazy. Um, but it's the one that was translated from Latin. Newly said, they just move me, numbers minus, poems murky, not simple, said Jupiter being petted, digit, seed me, cup quadrant, digit, unmounted, invents empty, rapidly inscribed, operation and over. Amazing, especially that operation over. Uh, invents empty, rapidly inscribed, operation over. Suddenly the poem becomes very coherent and it describes itself rapidly inscribed, written quickly, operation over. The poem announces its own conclusion. The operation of rapid inscription is over. Emma, maybe uh, you can tell us something about the process of writing that poem. What did you learn? Uh, what did you, what, what, what did that exercise allow you to do that you might not have done on your own? Um, well, it started as me being like, well, this word sounds like, it was started out as a collection of just random words, really. But then I guess these words just started to have some sort of meaning almost. So instead of being a bunch of random words, they were a bunch of random words that sort of maybe fit together. Yes, excellent. Um... One of the things I like about translation exercises is they allow you to get out of your own head. They give you uh, someone else's words or someone else's speech patterns, someone else's cadence, and they allow you to explore new ways of thinking and writing. So this is a, this is a fantastic poem, I think, especially in uh, those last two moments that I talked about, rapidly inscribed operation over. It's really fantastic. Okay, I'll read Ethan's poem very quickly, which I believe also is a response to the jungle noises, the frogs and the insects. Frogs jump about, enlarging their mouths and croaking. A strange language in a strange land of frogs, of nature, of sounds. A language of sounds, 
uh, a strange language in a strange land. Uh, this poem functions almost like those haiku poems, those translations that we read from Robert Hass and from Jane Hirschfield. The language is very simple. The imagery is very simple. Um, but when you start to analyze the relationship um, between uh, words and lines, there, I, I think here you find a kind of a deep, um, a, a not, not only a deeper meaning, but a very kind of significant experience, the experience of a strange language of sounds, um, the language which one cannot understand, but which one hears, uh, which one is forced to confront. Okay, great. So let's, um, Caleb, do, do we have, uh, do we have a list? Okay, so this is by Shilla. She has two. This first one is from the Catalyst. Uh, None of them see himself. He respects the god Jupiter, but never sees the real him. Now the love of his life came walking by with her sparkling smile and jeweled eyes. And when he set eyes on the lady fair, a feeling came over him, which was quite a scare. Meet at the water fountain here, he said, but he was scorned by her instead. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, let me just say something about that. And then maybe, Caleb, you can also read shifts. So I, I wanted to say, Shell, about this. That So what you have done is a kind of a hybrid exercise where you took the poem, number 70, as an opportunity to write your own poem. So you really did become a co-author. I was talking about how a translator is also a co-author or a co-writer. Um, you took the poem as a catalyst or a jumping off point to write your own poem, but you very obviously kind of filled in the gaps of nonsense with your own words to create a more coherent poem, a poem, in fact, that even rhymes on occasion. So, um, and it's quite an outstanding poem. I especially love the line. It's, this is really brilliant writing, I think. He respects the god Jupiter, but never sees the real him so good uh that hymn is ambiguous because you don't know if it is really referring to the god or to himself it's also just a kind of a it's a kind of an implicit covert description of uh respect for a god it's, it's pretty outstanding very brilliant um okay let's read ships i am a believer i believe as much as the air and the pen a gnat is a believer and the trees are green I don't want to pass into the night. I don't care if I do. I believe more than dirt in a flower bed. My trap is round. My eyes are raining, trickling cold. Every so often, I think I baked cookies. However, I didn't. Every so often, I think I'm blue, but I'm not. I believe. I will throw a box into the stream. If hornets rushed my face, I'd claw them so I could see once more. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. I, uh, it's amazing. Um, wow. Some fantastic lines. Um, I mean, the, 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 uh, I believe more than dirt in a flower bed, I think might be better than the actual original line. Um, my eyes are raining. Pretty, pretty, uh, interesting description. Um, I think I baked cookies. However, I didn't love it. So good. So weird. Um, every so often, I think I'm blue, but I'm not. I believe uh, that's that's kind of a strange, jarring, surprising juxtaposition. Uh, and then, and then, how you transform the line about hornets? Uh, I'd claw them so I could see once more. That's fantastic. Thank you. Okay, uh, now we can get Nova in. Okay, Nova, it's, it's all you. All right. So I'm gonna share a screen for this. Water vessels. I am religious, as religious as the whispering wind or muttering springs. I do not want to die. I do not die. I do not care if I die today or in five years. Sorry, that was a typo. Um, okay. I am more religious than sandstorms in the desert. The mouth of a child is gaping, a never ending void, always needing more and more. Okay, now this one, which I accidentally did the next prompt on. Cats rule us. New leaves say decrypt the moldy air. Me, a new beer mall. 
Paul Mihi non C cell Jupiter clip sent pet at decrypt said moldy air stupid o quad decrypt amount to <laughs> invent poet rapidly scrub beer opponent aqua. Okay, fantastic. First, let's and talk. Now my oh, last one. one. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it's called sounds, and this is it. Waves crashing, the peacefulness enveloping me. My mind grows still, and I tilt my head back and listen. Life is but a dream, so what is my wasting of it? My days are numbered. A screech bombards my ears. The call of the birds blend and create the sweetest of songs. Once again, I fall into the void of serene. I'm transported to a muttering room. The voices are nonsense, but yet I know. Beyond those smiling faces are cruel monsters that with a glance and a word can tear you apart with their universe of darkness that silently judges you with every passing second. Okay, great. Thank you. That's really great. Um, so the one thing I'll say, one thing about each of the poems. The first poem, what you did there that was pretty unique is you expanded the line about the child's mouth opening. And what you added to that line is actually a description of the religious experience. The, the, the poet becomes a child, a, the, the religious person becomes that a child. That was actually supposed to be about how a child needs a lot of stuff to grow. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Well, it's a, the thing about it is it's a metaphor. So um, we talked about metaphor two weeks ago. I don't know if you were there or not, Nova, but the metaphor of a child needing more and more to grow having the expanding mouth uh, is a kind of metaphor for the religious experience, the, the experience of the poem, expanding one's mouth to devour more and more or needing more and more sustenance. So uh, that was great. The final poem that you wrote um, was a kind of jumping off point. So you use the noises that I played for you as a way to launch into uh, a kind of imaginative space. So you use the sounds to imagine what it might be like to, to, to physically stand in the presence of those sounds. Um, and I noticed when you read your second poem that you were laughing. So what is funny about that poem? I, I, I that is absolute nonsense. And why is that funny? What's funny That's about it? That's funny to me because like I can't make head or toe of it. I, I agree. There is something very funny about it. Not just fun, not just funny, but also fun and enjoyable. And there's something almost liberating or exciting. Also, I, I yeah. transported 70 catchless to cats rule us. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, was, that was brilliant. That was very smart. That was very smart. It's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, Love. what else? Uh, we have Lena's poem here. Caleb, do you want to read that as well? Uh, sure. Okay, this is from the sounds. The waves crashed against the shore, the sound increasing and decreasing as it got closer and reached my ears. I was led away from the beach and brought to the pond. Birds tweet and frogs croaking, singing a soft lullaby. Much before I wanted it to end, they told me to come to another room. This room was filled with people talking. It was chaotic, nothing like the calm from the beach and the pond. This artificial world bothered me. The only bit of nature ever found in the world was in the rooms I had been in just a moment before. And the nature was the only thing that gave me a feeling of calm. The only bit of nature ever found in the world was in the rooms I had been in just a moment before. That's a brilliant line of poetry. Um, I think that's my favorite moment in this poem. So, so you kind of did the same thing that Nova did, Lena, where you used the sounds as an opportunity to place yourself in the, 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 the presence of those sounds in, in, in a kind of imaginative way. So that's how you decided to translate those sounds. Um, and, and what that did is it gave you an opportunity to write a poem in which the speaker of the poem is transported from place to place as if being transported from room to room 
Um, so it's a kind of metaphor for the imagination or for the human mind. Um, so that, that, was, that was pretty wonderful. I, I wonder if any of you tried to translate those sounds according, like did, did any of you take words that imitated those sounds? Um, did any of you use words to imitate, for example, the noises that you heard? Also, I think most of you translated the first sounds as a, as a, as a sound of an ocean. Uh, is that is that how all of you heard those sounds as waves moving water? So that that was actually a recording of a of a of a, a highway in in New York City, just outside of New York City. Maybe you noticed that there are occasionally honking horns. So that was very interesting that you heard waves um, from the sound of cars driving very fast on on the highway. Anyway, uh, I was just curious to know if anyone decided to to write more of a kind of sound poem using words that imitated. Uh, waves or cars or insects uh, or chatter, um, but it looks like it looks like maybe not. Um, okay. Uh, anyone else? Does anyone else want to read? Share the the translations that you came up with today. Okay. Well, um, if not, we're pretty close to time, so um, we can we can call this a day. Thank you for experimenting a little bit with me today, trying three smaller exercises instead of one big one. I think it was pretty fun. I loved, uh, I loved reading and hearing all of your poems. You all did a wonderful job. Next week, we'll go back to the more kind of conventional format, uh, the 30 minute writing session, but I thought we'd try something a little different today. Thank you again for your participation, for sharing your work. It was fantastic. I loved hearing from all of you. As I do every week, you're all very talented and brilliant. And I wish you good luck in your writing and all your artistic endeavors. See you next week.